Hi, in this video I'm going to walk you through using Raphael.js to animate a SVG path and I'm going to show you how you can use Illustrator to extract that path and animate it between different versions. Okay, so here we go. So first things first, let's get our uh, environment set up. So let's open up an animation file and let's go ahead and uh, set up our doc type. Okay, so we're going to import two libraries for this demo. We're going to import um, jQuery just to uh, hook into the onload script. Um, we're going to have a little bit of style in line for now. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Alright, so source. Let's go ahead and grab, grab this jQuery up here. And let's go ahead and grab uh, Raphael.js here. All right, and then um, a little bit of syntax error there. Let's do document ready, and let's go ahead and create an element in here called icon. And um, up here in our style block, we're going to want to give Raphael some canvas space to work with. So we're going to do, um, let's say, let's just do 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Okay, and then, and here's where we're going to use Raphael.js. So we're going to create our paper. Um, we're going to target the icon div, and we're going to tell it to use 500 by 500. Uh, okay, so here's what we do next. So now we want to draw something in our paper. So this would initialize our, our canvas. And now in order to get something into Raphael.js, we're going to want to, uh, we're going to use the path features. So here I have the Raphael.js uh, documentation open. Um, if I come over here to where it says path, um, let's just use the browser to search. Okay, so here we go. So SVG or has this uh, syntax called um, path strings, and their way of saying move to this coordinate and move along these positions. Um, at least that's my naive understanding. Um, but basically, they're complex paths through a campus, and um, Raphael can interpret them. Well, the good news is. Illustrator is a tool that makes it easy to draw them. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick our pen tool and we're just going to start drawing a shape. So uh, you know whatever kind of shape we want and maybe we want to say that okay that looks that looks kind of neat. So maybe let's try and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. You get the idea. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to save this out as a SVG file. Um, I'm going to put it into my document uh, root, and I'm going to say go ahead and say save. Um, I've already saved it once, but I'll show you the options. So you're going to want to choose SVG 1.0, although I don't believe it matters which you choose. Um, I'm going to say I'll put fewer T spans, and I'm just going to click OK. All right. So now back into our editor. Uh, if we open up icon uh, SVG, what's interesting about this is you see the path element in SVG, you see the stroke color and the width, but more importantly, you see the path in which we want to draw. So based on the documentation here, you can see that there's a method path and you can pass it a path string for this exact same string here. So let's go ahead and let's try this out. So let's go ahead and draw this, this path that we see in the document. So, all right. So we're gonna need a web server. So let me go ahead and open up a web server. Um, uh, let's see here. 
We use the Python uh, simple HTTP server. I'm sure there's probably an easy way to background that, but um, for now we'll do it that way. So now we have a, a server running on uh, port 8000, and we want to come over here and go to localhost 8000. All right. Um, we want to open up our animated HTML file. And you can see there it is. Um, it doesn't draw with the, the color that we had in here or the width. So we can come back into here and we can do path. Uh, so this would be our path. So now we can assign attributes to our path using Raphael's um, API. So one of the things we could do is we could fill our path, but what we want to do is actually stroke our path. So let's go ahead and, and use the stroke option here. Pass in the option back into our SVG file. Let's go ahead and pick the color that we chose, or maybe our designer chose. And let's go ahead and, and refresh and see the result. Look at that. Um, now, to increase the width, um, well, this is an example of um, icons that uh, the author of RaphaelJS drew for you. So. These, these are great because, like I said, you can just drop in your path strings here. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll plug that. So, uh, so RaphaelJS slash icons. These are awesome icons. It's amazing they can do this for everyone. Really, really cool. Um, okay, so back over here. Uh, so, we want to set another attribute on our path. Um, I'm not sure if we can do that, actually. Um, I have never done that before. So we're going to skip setting the stroke width. I'm sure there's a way to do that. Um, but in the meantime, let's just get to the fun part, which is let's take our, our path here and let's animate our path. Let's have it uh, maybe move across the stream. So we're going to create another path to animate to. And the way we're going to do that is simply by manipulating the path that we've already created here. And let's say we want to have it um, animate out to here. Okay, so we're going to resave our uh, path to SVG and we'll reload our graphic. We saw the path changed. So, so now what we can do is let's say, let's set a timeout and after a, a minute of, of runtime, uh, let's go ahead and have our path animate and let's have it animate to our our new path string. Oops, I copied that. Okay, to our new path string. Um, if we go ahead and we come back over to Raphael JS over here, and we look at the animate method, um, there's a couple of options we could pass in. Um, let's see. So we can pass it uh, the the amount of time. And we can even tell it to use a specific effect. Um, it gives some neat examples of the different types of animation effects. So you can kind of see how things move. I actually, I think the, I think the bounce effect is pretty cool. So let's use the, the bounce effect. So let's have this animate for a minute and a half. And I'm sorry, a second and a half. And bounce is the effect. All right. So let's come back over to our demo, and let's go ahead and run our demo. That's pretty cool, right? So now maybe what we want to do to make this more interesting is actually have it bounce back to um, the original second. So what we're going to want to do now is we have these two paths, and let's factor them out into two path strings that we saved. Um, be a little bit inattentive there and format my code better. Um, so P1 is this path, and P2 is our second path. Um, so let's go start off by drawing P1, and then let's draw P2. Okay. Now what we'd like to do is have it loop between P1 and P2, and perhaps we'd like to wait for one millisecond or one second between animations. Um, so there's this callback function, um, it will call for us at the end of an animation. 
So let's just make sure that that works the way we think it works. There we go. So, in other words, instead of delaying the start of the animation, let's go ahead and let the animation recursively uh, animate itself to the next uh, path. So we'll define a next path variable here, uh, which will initially be p2. And let's see, how should we have this work? So we'll define a function, uh, animate. And our animate function is going to animate. Oh, let's see what we'll do. So we'll put these into an array of paths. Okay, and then we'll just keep track of which path we're currently loaded in. Now I think this uh, demo is taking a little bit longer, but um, I think this will be pretty neat. Oops. Okay, so instead of having an X path, let's have a current equals zero. Um, set it to one because initially We'll be drawing the path, and that will be paths. So, actually, we'll just do it this way. Kind of uh, doing this now. Let's see, do my pants? Let's see. So, okay, so that's going to draw the path. Then we're going to tell the path to be a certain color. Now, I feel has a nicer syntax. So for that, we can just say, go ahead and draw yourself. Um, now we've got our animate function, and our animate function is going to do uh, paths of parent. Plus plus, and uh, it's going to actually just recursively call itself. And down here, we want this to just call itself. Of course, we have to um, check the bounds here. So if current is um, current is greater than Path.length greater than or equal to path.length, and current should go back to zero. Uh, what this will allow us to do is actually create a sequence of path animations. So uh, we'll, we'll kick off the first animation here, and yeah, sorry about this, we'll actually go ahead and we'll start after, let's give it 500 milliseconds. Um, just, a, just enough delay to make sure that, um, you know, document.ready is running before maybe the full document is loaded. So let's make sure the path is fully drawn and then let's go ahead and say, okay, now start the animation. Um, gives the eye some time to uh, uh, recognize the initial shape that's drawn. So if this works, we'll be animating back and forth between the two shapes. Of course, um, you know, like they say, things never work the first time. So let's go ahead and open up the console, and of course P2 is not defined, and probably at some point in time we had a P2, and sure enough, we did. So what do we want this to say? We actually don't need to call this function, we just call our nice inline defined function animate. In fact, our timeout is even simpler than that. There we go. So now we're animating back and forth between two paths. So obviously um, the way this is designed now we could create another path so we could come back into Illustrator and say okay let's, um, let's manipulate this a little bit more you know let's have it kind of bounce up here like that uh, maybe that's a little wacky let's twist it a little bit more go ahead and we save that out and then um, go back into our icon here um, Go ahead and grab that, and, and let's make this the, the now new last one. Let's go ahead and animate this some more. Uh -huh. Isn't that cool? So, you know, obviously this could just continue on and on. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and stop, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, I'll post the code and make it available.